All right, hello, folks. Uh, this is MJ, and I'm back uh, with a video tonight. It is nine o'clock. I've been meaning to make this video uh, earlier today. <coughs> uh, actually, did make it on a, another uh, device and with my partner and. Uh, video actually jacked up but the video in particular is about what everybody or the old i shouldn't even say the old heads but those with experience of seeing the trucking game stop taking cheap freight um i uh do a lot of hauling cars being my, my uh, partner uh my boy we we haul cars started out in the freight market and did that for about six months and then switched up the cars to see uh how cars would be um and uh I shouldn't even say six months maybe about three uh months switched up to cars to see how cars would actually be and uh uh taking a liking to uh hauling cars uh to me it's a little bit more simpler, a little bit more easier. Um, you know, I get to a location, I don't have to worry about anybody um, loading me up. I can load myself up uh, as long as I can get the vehicle, load up just as quick as I can load it up, scrap it down. I'm up and back on the road and I'm out of there. So I kind of like the car hauling game. Uh, it's a little bit different from freight to a certain extent in a sense of, um, you know, I think with cars, it requires a little bit more work uh, because you have to piece together uh, more pieces or more parts uh, to make a load versus with freight, you may be able to get one uh, piece and uh, that might be paying or that might be taking your uh, entire load or paying for your entire trip or so on and so on. Uh, so, as you can see, I am on Central Dispatch, um, and the reason why, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the reason why I wanted to make this video is because earlier today, um, in which uh, you won't be able to see it up here because it's been taken off this list, uh, I am in the Greenville, North Carolina area. I live out of Greenville. Oh, I am uh, out of the Greenville area. Um, so today, uh, my boy, uh, or yesterday in particular, he saw a load up here. Um, and I'm not going to call out the broker because the broker is pretty decent, uh, for the most part. Uh, saw a load up here, um, and, uh, it was going from New Bern to Kenley, North Carolina. This week, he's trying to stay local, testing it out. Uh, to see if you can make some money doing some local runs and uh, he also has some engagements that he has to take care in town so um, he was looking for a, a local run uh, and found one two vehicles uh, going from Kenley to not Kenley but New Bern to Kenley um, North Carolina um, I think the total miles is like 81 miles or something of that nature uh, let me see really quick. It's about 81 miles, I think, from New Bern to Kenley. Let's put in Kenley directions, then New Bern. Okay, like it. Oh, so, right. So, depending on which way you go, 81, 80 miles. So, 81 miles. Um, you can see the time that it takes to get there. Uh, not a long trip. Uh, I don't know why I clicked on that. Not a long trip. So, um, we are located in this area right here. Uh, and um, he would have had to go down to New Bern, uh, dead head down to New Bern, pick up a New Bern and take it to Kenley. But it was paying a uh total of three hundred dollars um it was a dollar and seventy nine cent per mile i think that's what their post was um if you look on let me set this up real quick Ooh, doo, 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 doo. all right 
right, so what I set up up here on Central Dispatch, I set up in Greenville, North Carolina, 100 mile radius of Greenville, North Carolina. Uh, the filters um, I put in here, the filter for <coughs> at least a dollar per mile. I could change this, but it's no need to. Um, which is the date, how far you want it to ring out uh, or go out, search out. Um, cargo, open trailer, and uh, running vehicles. Um, I don't get into doing non-running vehicles because they don't want to pay for them for the most part, unless you're already on location and you don't take a end up for uh, uh, a cheap price. Shouldn't be taking anything for a cheap price, which is why we're making this video. But so this load three hundred dollars, dollar seventy nine cent a mile. And matter of fact, let me change this too. The way that they do this on uh, Central, when you have at least two vehicles like this one in particular, right? This is going. This is just an example. Wake Forest to uh, Beaufort, I'm assuming, uh, Georgia, right? It's 380 miles, but this is paying $1,300. Obviously, that's not a dollar per mile because a dollar per mile, you do that times that, you're not going to get 1300 When you have multiple vehicles, what Central Dispatch does is it tells you how much each vehicle is paying per mile. So each vehicle is paying $1.14 per mile uh, to give you a total of uh, $1,300. Right, so his vehicle in particular was paying a dollar seventy nine cent per mile. It was two vehicles, uh, which is not bad at all because I think that came out to be uh, in the head that's three forty, uh, somewhere around about uh, three eighty a mile. If I ain't mistaken, I think I said that right. Let's see if my math is on target tonight. Oh Jesus. I think I'm off. Should be 60. Yeah. If you just simply take that up, you can get that easy. Uh, so 358 uh, a mile. <coughs> Math well. Uh, but um, 358 a mile, which is not bad, right? Uh, but uh, we always ask for more money, right? Don't just take what you see or the first load that you see. Always ask for more money, which gets into the thing of not taking cheap freight. Now, that's not necessarily cheap freight or cheap uh, a cheap load because it's, you know, again, it's three, uh, 58 a mile, not bad. But here's what he did. He asked them for $400, right? And then asking them for 400 of course, they're going to negotiate. They shot back. Instead of going to 400, they said, "Hey, we'll do 375." So he got them up from 300 to 375. Um, and with that, if you divide that by that 81 miles, now that's four dollars and sixty-two cent a mile. So it's an extra what dollar and four cent per mile, right? So he was supposed to be getting the vehicle. <laughs> which was a little dirty on the part of the broker. He was supposed to be getting this uh, dispatch to him, uh, and he was waiting for the dispatch uh, this morning because he had to call him this morning when they opened, and he never got the dispatch, so he called back. And when he called back, uh, the dispatcher told him that, hey, um, somebody called in and was willing to take it for the posted price of $300. So here you go, you know, again, not a bad load at 358 uh, or, <coughs> you know, eh, not bad, right? At the same time and the same token, whoever the person was, they left money sitting on the table. And who's to say that they wouldn't have went up? He said 400, but they probably would have went to 420, 425, something like 425, somewhere in that area, right? Um, you never know. So it's like with it and in it. Stop trying to take cheap freight, man. Stop undercutting uh, each other, in which I'm sure that the guy, whoever took it, or gal, uh, they weren't trying to undercut anybody. They were just taking it for the posted price. And, of course, the broker, hey, if I can pay 300 <laughs> instead of paying 375 then, of course, that's what I'm going to do. But at the same time, uh, whoever it is that got the load, um, they left money sitting on the table. 
they could have got this load at 462 instead of taking it at 358. So, you know, there's a lesson behind it in doing this uh, freight and doing vehicles. You always ask for more money. See if you can get some more money. Um, and don't take it cheap. Um, and don't take the first thing that you get. If they say no, or well, if they say no, it's still a, a, a good paying load at 368. But at least you ask for it. At least you got some, you know, you, you try to get it. Because one thing you find out that these brokers have no problem with posting these uh, crappy loads. Um, and matter of fact, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. Uh, let's take this off of here. Uh, from time to time, I do this here just to play around with it, right? So, you know, you'll see that up there. That got put up there, 6 cent. I wouldn't take, uh, excuse me, I don't want to use this language tonight, but I wouldn't take nothing for 60 cent. You better believe that. Uh, not happening, ever. Uh, I gotta be desperate. And I do mean desperate, like going to Florida for instance. Stay out of there because you ain't getting nothing coming out of there. That's freight or vehicles. Uh, but anybody that's new in the game and everybody that's old in the game, they already know. But if you look up here, you can see some of these ridiculous uh, amounts. You know, you got 450. <clears throat> and another thing, I don't care what anybody says, right? You know, this number right here uh, is not as important as this number here, that rate per mile. And that's where freight or vehicles. When you're talking, or when I'm talking to you, I want to know, I want to know what is the rate per mile. All right? I can care less about what this, well, I ain't going to say I can care less, but you know what I'm saying. This is more important because this can be $5,000. But if that's six to eight cent, that five thousand is peanuts. You're not even. I mean, if you look at the price of diesel right now alone in Greenville, it's five thirty nine. I'm sure it's higher in other places. You know, you look at a hot shot truck on average, you're running somewhere around about. Let's just say if it was ten miles to the gallon, that means you're paying fifty three cent per uh, mile that you go. If you took this load for six to eight cent per mile, it wouldn't be worth two cents. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, you're probably going to add something else to it, but half of what you're getting, the majority of it is going to fuel. You're not making any money. So that's the idea of not taking a cheap freight and always asking for more. But as long as you got somebody out here and there's always going to be somebody out there that's willing to take that cheap freight, uh, the brokers don't have to take this pay up to reflect um, the prices of fuel um, and so on. Uh, but you can see that's six to eight cent a mile. Uh, look at this ridiculous load, 484 miles, 52 cent a mile. Now at the same time too, it depends on what you're pulling. Now your nine car haulers, they might be able to take this, um, if they can piece it together like they want it, right? <coughs> But uh, I doubt very seriously a nine car hauler or, you know, eight car hauler, six car hauler is going to go all the way to Dunn, North Carolina for one vehicle for 52 cents a mile. Now, if they can piece it together and get a ton of vehicles out of that area or fill up that trail of that area, they probably will be willing to take it. Uh, me in particular right now, uh, under a dollar a mile, I don't even look at it unless... Right, that other uh, vehicle uh, or the other vehicles that you put on your trailer um, uh, is paying good. You know, let's say that it was paying dollar seventy nine cent a mile. Uh, this wouldn't be bad to just to piece it together with it because you add two cents off of the other one. This would come up to a dollar, and the other one would be paying. Oh yeah, that's ready, but um, bring it up here and bring me tonight. Matter of fact, I'll come over there to you. That one right there would be worth taking. But you can see, uh, give me a second, let me cut this pizza. Uh, that one right there is 44 cent a mile. I can't see exactly. Do, do, do. Yeah, I give you the little side. What's up, boy? What you think, man? About what? Give you the little side. I don't care, I don't have you something to eat. <laughs> oh, uh, never mind, I do. Put me some on the plate too, bye. Yeah. <coughs> so,
So this one right here from Rocky Mount to Atlanta, Georgia, 456 miles, paying 44 cent. Um, I've seen them up here as low as 15 cent per mile. And the thing of it is, if they're posting it up here for 15 cent a mile, there's some food like they're taking it, guarantee you. Um, but you got to get to the point where you're not desperate and uh, you're not willing to take this, uh, these cheap vehicles or this cheap freight to make these people take the amounts up. You look at this one, that's 43 cent a mile going all the way to freaking uh, Fer Ferndale, Washington from North Carolina is 3,017 miles and the only thing that you will make off that is $1,300. It's not even worth it. I wouldn't even leave my driveway for that, correct? So, you know, you got to get in the mind of, you know, one, knowing your numbers, um, how much it costs you to operate your truck. If you got a driver, how much it costs you to pay your driver. Uh, how much your fuel costs. Um, you know, how much does it cost to buy a tire? Uh, if you have a blowout on the road for your truck or for your trailer, you got to piece all that kind of stuff together because taking this cheap freight, you'll be out of business in no time. You'll never make it. Um, so the main thing is, and the lesson learned in most of it, because when I first got into it, which I haven't been into it forever, uh, for a long time, uh, actually, under my uh, authority, it's about nine months old. When I first got in, then with freight, I always asked for more money. I looked at enough YouTube videos, YouTube University to learn that. But with vehicles, you know, I, I, a lot of times when I got up here, I just took uh, the price that you saw up there, which is probably what uh, the guy or girl did today. Um, and it's like you have to learn the game and you have to learn it quickly. Always ask for more money because if we got the same two loads and um, we're going to the same place and I'm getting paid an extra 200 300 more than you are, and we uh, hey, how much you get paid? How much you get paid? And you, you know, uh, you'll be pissed because at this point, you almost feel sick. I just I could have made an extra 300, you know what I mean. So, you know, don't take cheap freight. Uh, always ask for more money. Now, there are certain companies up here you'll learn, uh, i.e. Uh, Assertus, and sometimes they're willing to go up, not many times. Uh, AVC Options, uh, United Road, some of those um, bigger uh, brokers or bigger companies, uh, a lot of times they may not be willing to negotiate a lot but they will um i remember one in particular and i'm not gonna call the broker out because i, I take vehicles for them quite often um but i learned a valuable lesson and that valuable lesson was this i took a truck somewhere i think it was coming out of either arkansas or alabama one of the two but the truck itself was paying about uh no matter of fact i didn't take it i had a driver at the time which was a complete disaster lasted about a week or two and that was over real quick fast and in a hurry um but he took a truck um uh, and the truck <coughs> was paying i think it was 765 um and uh he screwed up the driver got out there he wasn't uh taking pictures of vehicles anytime you pick up a vehicle you need to take detailed pictures of any kind of damages or anything of that nature because if you put it on that truck uh put it on the trailer and you take it and you didn't take pictures prior to any damages is on that vehicle that that person might try to claim say hey you damaged this or something of that nature if you can't prove that you didn't that's a claim on your insurance um so you got to be careful so he wasn't taking pictures although he was taking pictures for facebook he wouldn't take the proper pictures that was needed um for documenting any kind of damages that was needed for the um for the bols and so on and so on so i had to fight with the the broker uh with this vehicle and end up taking a loss on it right 
So the vehicle was supposed to be for 765. The broker actually, or the worker uh, for the broker actually made a mistake and sent me how much this vehicle actually paid out to them. So they were paying 765 on this vehicle, but they were, this vehicle was paying, I think it was $1,280 to them. So, I mean, just looking at the difference, 1280 uh, and which I still got the the email and which uh, she sent. Oh, Jesus, what did I just do? I didn't know what I did there. Uh, 1280, subtract 765. So that broker, unbeknownst to us, made a total of $515 off of that, um, that vehicle. And uh, we were supposed to make a total of 765, right? Again, had to be careful, have to take a loss. Uh, had to take a loss because this guy didn't do the job properly, what he was supposed to be doing. Um, so out of that, the broker, or we would have made 765 and the broker would have made 515. So it's like I've learned a valuable lesson with that is you always ask for more money because, I mean, $515, they're almost making just as much sitting in the office as you are doing all the hard work. Uh <laughs> Uh, take matter of fact, they are making because by the time you take out fuel costs uh, for where you're going, you're probably going to be down to six hundred, some five hundred something dollars. So they're making just as much in an office as you are out on the road doing the work, loading up the vehicle, scrapping it down, uh, unscrapping, taking the vehicle off, uh, driving, paying the fuel, and so on and so on. So you always ask for money, uh, for more money. If they say no, fine, at least you ask for it. Then <clears throat> have your mind made up whether you're willing to take that vehicle or not. Because if they say no, it's like, then what? Are you going to take the vehicle? Or, you know, are you going to still be willing to take the vehicle at what they uh, posted it up there for? So, um, you know, the biggest thing is just ask for more money, man. No. Oh, well, if they say yes. Guess what? You just got some more money. So, you know, in it and with it, you know, be smart about what you're doing so that your business can last and so that you're making decent money. Because when you're paying insurance, when you're paying truck payment, when you're paying fuel costs and uh, so on, maintenance, putting away for taxes and all that, you really ain't got time to be taking a cheap freight. Uh, because you're going to find out again quickly. You're not going to make it that long. Um, and, you know, by the time you put all this investment in it and you're taking cheap freight, you got to know your worth. If, um, you know, where's that 44 cent? Oh, that 52. If 52 cent is good for you, you know, if that's your worth, that's your worth. But I ain't taking a vehicle nowhere for 52 cent, 44 cent. Uh, and uh, the likes either, not gonna happen. So, um, you know, stop taking cheap freight, stop taking cheap vehicles. Uh, that's the only way that you're gonna be able to get these rates up because again, with diesel at uh, 539, um, I think my boy saw it up to about 570 today. It's still in North Carolina. It's like, man, you know, gotta do something to offset that price. And, you know, the only thing that you really can do from the transportation side of it is you got to take up your price for transport, um, you know. And as they always say, you know, you don't always want to be working off of the load boards. Uh, you know, you got to get direct customers. But with direct customers and a mix of load board, and you still might have to use load board at some point to do back calls and so on and so on. But uh, no more cheap freight. Stop taking it. No more cheap vehicles. Stop taking it. It's not worth it. You're going to go out of business. So, video long. How long is this video so far? Oh, God. Way too long. Jesus. Um, you know, I'll cut it here. Um, you know, you all have a good night. Um, you know. 
Dream about, you know, not taking cheap freight. Dream about negotiating your rates and all that good stuff like that, you know. Let's get these rates up. All right. With that, I'm out. Very long video. But, uh, you know, it has to be said. Uh, so that people will know not to take cheap freight. Peace out. I'm going.